Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that we link with the summer transfer move to Arsenal. Now, exciting times today. Good news when it comes to Arsenal. We're making moves in the transfer market and making a move for a position that over the years we have just not filled. And that is the position of defensive midfielder. It's one of the things that over the years with Arsene Wenger, as much as we loved him, he never seemed to address. Ever since we, ever since Gilberto Silva left Arsenal, I don't think we've ever had a proper defensive midfielder. We've had guys who've gone in there and kind of done a job. Xhaka's kind of been a defensive midfielder, but he's not really. Alex Song was kind of a defensive midfielder. Flamini was kind of a defensive midfielder, but now it looks like Arsenal are finally about to address a position that has needed addressing for years on years by signing Lucas Torreira. This looks like it is about to happen. The 22-year-old, we've been speaking about him a lot on the show. It, we're being told that all the reports yesterday that he's going to sign a deal worth £26 million he will move from Sandoria to Arsenal and he will become another one of Unai Emery's signings. And I think this is an excellent, excellent bit of business. He had a great season last year. Um, he's burst into the Uruguay squad. He'll be featuring in the World Cup. You'll get to um, have a chance to see him there. And um, he's known as a tough tackling player, great positioning loves to rat around, you know, attackers and midfield players and not give them space. Very similar to N'Golo Kante. Very similar. There's lots of comparisons with him and N'Golo Kante that he's all energy. He's not a big guy like Kante, so he's not six foot four and he's not like a Matic or somebody like that. But you don't, you know, N'Golo Kante you know, has shown that you don't have to be like a huge person in the middle of the park. You can be a guy that's great at positioning, you can be all energy and you can be a guy that always denies players space and you're really combative. So he's good at doing that. He's great at passing the ball. So he's not just a guy that just, you know, just wins the ball and just plays it two yards to the next person to then move it forward. He can do that. But he's great at passing the ball. And also, he's very, very good at free kicks. He's a bit of a free kick specialist as well. So, this represents great value. There were a lot of teams after him. Napoli was, uh, seemed to be the team that were really, really seemed to be winning the race to sign him. But it looks like Arsenal have got their man. And Lucas Torreira will be unveiled. I'm not sure when, but will be unveiled as an Arsenal player. And that is a great bit of business for a position that we have just not addressed. Another position that needs addressing that we all know is a position of goalkeeper. Petr Cech, we know last year, didn't have a very good season at all. It's been a bit indifferent since he's come in. Sometimes, you know, fairly consistent. Another time, you know, he's looked his age, which is 36. David Ospina, good second goalkeeper. You know, another guy's at the World Cup, but not top draw. Well, it looks like Arsenal are moving and they're definitely going to be signing Bern Leno. Um, Bern Leno of Bayer Leverkusen, 26. We've been talking about him as well right from the start of the transfer window. Remember, I said to you a couple of weeks ago that Eintracht Frankfurt had um, signed another keeper, uh, Lucas Her Her hard to pronounce that, Herodeki of Eintracht Frankfurt. I'm sorry, Leverkusen had signed him from Eintracht Frankfurt. And... Um, said basically to um, Bert Leno that you can leave, you know, you're free to leave the club. And Leno's a really, really good quality goalkeeper. He just missed out on the World Cup squad. He was in the provisional World Cup squad, but he just missed out on that. And to be fair, you know, Germany have got some superb goalkeepers that they can choose from. Um, and again, this looks like a really, really positive sign-in. You know, all the reports out of Germany that he, he is you know, sort of next in line to sort of burst into that German squad as, you know, one of the keepers. One worrying stat that was uh, sent to me by my friend Max yesterday, a uh, big Borussia Dortmund fan who always gives me a lot of good updates on some of the uh, German players. 
This stat was a bit worrying that Leno has committed the second most errors that have directly led to a goal, nine in total, out of any other keeper in the Bundesliga since 2016. I didn't like that stat. You know? um, I did ask him, I said, he's not another carrier, is he? He said, no, no, no. He, he goes, he is a very, very good goalkeeper. So it looks like Leno is going to be coming in. So that will represent Socrates, um, Lichsteiner, I nearly forgot it, <laughs> Torreya, <laughs> Torreya. Um, coming in and burn Leno. Now, if you look at those signings, it's all about the spine of the team. Torreya, that defensive midfielder that sits in front of the back four. Socrates, solid defender. Lichsteiner, a solid, solid right back with bags of experience. And, and those two guys that are right at the back there, lots of experience. And very, very positive for me. Even more positive, looks like we're looking at another centre-back, another guy I've been talking about a lot on the show, Kaglar Sionku. He could be on his way for Arsenal. Listen to these comments that came out from the club president of his previous club in um, Turkey called Antinodoru. Now, he was being asked about Kaglar Sionku and whether he thinks he's going to be leaving um, Freiburg. And his quotes were this. He said, Arsenal made an inquiry about his time at the club. And of course, we would make a cut from the transfer if he joins Arsenal. Bayern Munich also wants him, but he's on his way to the Premier League. And um, that's the president of um, Altinador, Altinadoru, um, over there in Turkey, who um, Soyonku used to play for before going to Freiburg. And really interesting comments. So basically he's saying that Arsenal have been in contact to ask about him you know, what was, what was Suyonku like as a young player when he was there in Turkey before he moved to Freiburg? So that's Arsenal doing their research on him. And he's basically saying that he's on his way to the Premier League. And, you know, Fry, you know uh, that club there in Turkey will get a sell-on clause, 25%. So they'll be more than happy to see him um, moving on from Freiburg. But again, looks like... So Yonku could be on his way to Arsenal. And again, that's another centre-back. And my friend Max again over there in Germany, when I asked him about Sionku, he said, listen, he's a bit raw, but he goes, he'd say he's amongst the two best up-and-coming centre-backs in the Bundesliga. So again, that's really, really positive. I caution myself because when I've spoken to Max before, he told me that... Um, Xhaka was going to be an excellent signing and that hasn't really worked out um, he also told me that Kalasinac was a brilliant player you know what we might see the best of these guys under Unai Emery but I'm so infused that at last we are addressing some of the positions that have needed addressing for a couple of seasons or more and that is the whole spine of the team I still think that Arsenal could do with um, bringing in a real marquee signing Something that's going to get the fans really, really excited. But I look at these signings, I say they're all very positive. They're all strengthening those defensive areas. This particular one I'm really infused about is the Lucas Torreira one. We've just needed that defensive midfielder for so long. But what happens to Steven Nzonzi? Really interesting yesterday that he came out, he was being interviewed. He, of course, he's in the French squad. And he came out and said, listen, I really want to play for a big club now. I really want to go play with some real big players you know what they'd say in the business he issued a come and get me um sort of you know uh warning out there to all the clubs around Europe now Arsenal were heavily linked we know that Unai Emery had him at Sevilla and really really liked him we know he's played in the Premier League before he is that big holding midfielder but surely if we're bringing in Lucas Torreira, that's the end of uh, us bringing in Zonzi in at Arsenal. And uh, Zonzi would have been great. But if you look at this Torreira and you look at his age, he's still a young player. Even though he's got loads of experience in playing regular football, it's a, a much better deal. He's cheaper, but you're buying a player that's younger, that in time will be worth way more. In Zonzi, Sevilla asking something like about £35 million, which is just way too much. Um, so it looks like it's going to be Torreya and not Inzonzi. 
Ainsley Maitland-Niles, uh, congratulations to him. He signed a new long-term contract with Arsenal yesterday. I think he really, really deserved that. He had a really breakthrough season last year, even though we didn't have a great season. He was one of those sort of standout young players. He played right back, he played left back, he played in midfield. Anywhere he was asked to play, he played really well and he'd done a great job. And one of the things that Unai Emery has been tasked to do is to develop these young players and turn them into real superstars. And Ainsley Maitland-Niles is one of those guys that I think could really go all the way. Um, I, I was a bit uncertain about him when he first sort of burst on the scene at Arsenal. Um, but he has really, really come on. And I think this guy's going to be a fantastic player. And I think hard work pays off. He's come into the squad, given his opportunity by Arsene Wenger. And his hard work has paid off with a new long-term contract. So well done to him. And let's hope that we see a lot more of him next season as well. Real, real talent. Jack Wilshire is apparently um, in talks with Unai Emery. No contract done yet, as we know. Um, but we're being told that the talks for him um, are still ongoing. So there's still a possibility that he could still be an Arsenal player. But with Torreya coming in, who knows? Is he going to want to stick around? Does that now, again, send him down the pecking order a bit? Who knows? Let's wait and see how that develops. I would love to see him stay at the club. Um, Yassin Adli. Now, remember, we spoke about him and um, he turned down a chance to stay at PSG and was on his way to Arsenal. Uh, last week, there was reports that um, he was going to stay in France and he posted something on his Instagram saying that, People don't know what they're talking about. So again, it seemed like he was heading to Arsenal. Now, he looks like he's made another U-turn. Um, the guys at PSG have had a word with him and he's now decided that he's going to stay at PSG. Uh, he's a real hot prospect, 70 years of age, midfield player. But it looks like he will be staying at Paris Saint-Germain. He will not be um, moving to Arsenal. He was all set to come along. So um, that's one that it looks like we've missed out on. What about Gelson Martins, though? This one is still ongoing. Spoke about it on the show yesterday. Uh, Martins, of course, is rumoured to be one of these players that is looking to cancel his contract at Sporting Lisbon after Sporting Lisbon players were attacked um, at a training session towards the end of last season. Arsenal really keen on him. If he did cancel it, they'd love that because they could get him on a free. If not, is probably going to cost him about £30 million. He's an out-and-out -out winger, really, really talented player. And again, I think that's another one of those positions that Arsenal really need to fill. That winger position, that exciting winger. And Gelson Martins, another guy who's going to be at the World Cup, another guy we'll be keeping our eye on at the World Cup. Could he also be coming to Arsenal? Apparently, talks are ongoing with his representatives as well. So that could be another player. So Arsenal are really, really busy at the moment. And um, yeah, I think it's good times. Good times. We're bringing in some good players. But as I said, I really want to see if Arsenal can get these signings done and top it off with a real marquee name, it'd be a fantastic transfer window. And when was the last time you saw Arsenal making all these sort of moves at the start of a transfer window? I mean... There's been times when, it was like a couple of seasons ago when we did that real panic buying when we brought in all Arteta and all these guys, Giroud and all. But making moves this early in the transfer window for quality players, we just haven't done that over the years. We've divvied and we've divvied. And I think this new structure we've got in place at Arsenal is really encouraging. It looks like they're down and they're getting down to business and they're getting the business done. And that's what we want to see. So... Let's see what happens. Um, listen, tomorrow we're going to be heading out to Russia for the World Cup. We're going to be over there, Arsenal Fan TV, AFTV, doing the World Cup. Lots and lots of coverage over there. One of the things we're going to be doing throughout the World Cup is keeping an eye on, number one, our players that are playing in um, different, various teams in the World Cup, but also some of those players that we've been linked with. We'll be looking at players like Torreira and see how he gets on for Uruguay. We'll be looking at Gelson Martins. All these sort of guys and any other potential players that we see in the World Cup and we think, wow, sign him up, Unai, sign him up. So, and we'll, we'll be having a daily show, the, uh, the Bias World Cup show. That's going to be taking place every day with me and troops. We're going to be having coverage from over here in the UK. We're doing a link up with a bar uh, down in the West End called Dirty Harry's. Um, guys like DT and people like that, they'll be down there watching certain games if you want to get down there. 
Um, so we'll be getting you right across that, a lot of that information tomorrow, but all the coverage of the World Cup, you want to find out what's happening, whether it's in Russia or whether over here, keep it locked here on AFTV. Can England do something at the World Cup? I certainly hope that they can do. I really love to see Welbeck feature a lot. I'm still gutted that Jack ain't there, but I really love to see Welbeck featuring a lot in that World Cup, and he should. Every time he's Come on for England, he's done well. So for all your World Cup coverage, starting from tomorrow, keep it locked here on AFTV. Thanks for watching the show. I will be back tomorrow.